Air travel in Canada is notoriously expensive. As a result, there have been quite a few new entrants into the commercial airline sector here, all promising to bring lower fares with them. One of these is Canada Jetlines, a startup airline that was first formed 10 years ago in 2012. Since then, they've been seemingly getting close to launching flights at various points, but not quite. However, just in the past few weeks, their very first Airbus A320 has rolled out of paint in Shannon, Ireland, which is a very significant milestone for them. So, let's take a look at the timeline of just how Jetlines got to this point, and what their plans are going forward. Starting back in 2012, Jetlines was created with the intention of filling a void in the Canadian airline market as the country's first ultra-low-cost carrier. They had initially planned to start operations in the fall of 2014, with two Airbus A319s based out of Vancouver International Airport. Of course, with any startup airline, raising enough capital is a significant barrier to entry, and in the spring of 2014, the company was reportedly aiming to raise $100 million to get the airline up and running. As such, that fall 2014 launch date later became spring 2015. In December of 2014, though, Jetlines made news with an order for five Boeing 737 MAX 7s, with options for a further 16. These would be delivered starting in 2021, and marked one of Boeing's few MAX 7 customers. In the meantime, the company was pursuing some older 737s for their initial operations. Following some legal turmoil between Jetlines and a former investor in 2015, while continuing their efforts to raise capital, Jetlines did get a few wins in 2016. In April, they formally asked the Government of Canada to increase the limit for the foreign ownership of Canadian airlines from 25% to 49%. Doing so would facilitate international investment into Jetlines, and there were reportedly several interested parties. Later that year, the federal government began plans to increase those foreign ownership limits, and also granted an immediate exemption to both Jetlines and fellow low-cost startup Enerjet. In February of 2017, Jetlines completed the reverse takeover process of JetMetal, a publicly traded shell company. Doing so allowed Jetlines to go public on the Toronto Stock Exchange, thus bringing in more funding. Following a change in leadership in the summer of 2017, Jetlines aimed to finally launch flights in the summer of 2018. It was also this summer that the airline rebranded, changing their still-conceptual look from the Frontier-esque blue and green livery to a red, blue, and silver one instead. In September, a letter of intent for two Boeing 737-800s was signed with an American aircraft lesser. These were aimed to be delivered in April 2018, which would set them up for a launch that summer. However, this lesser wasn't able to provide a definitive delivery date. Jetline said in a statement in March that the current market for leased aircraft has tightened considerably during 2017 and early 2018 owing to the A320neo engine issues at the time, as well as demand for 737-800 freighter conversions. As a result, the summer 2018 launch would no longer take place, and the airline would not be flying these 737s. In June, Jetline signed another lease agreement, but this time for two Airbus A320s from global aircraft lesser Aircap for delivery by the first half of 2019. Also in late 2018 and early 2019, Jetline secured some major investment, up to $15 million from Latvian Airlines Smartlinks and up to $14 million from a South Korean fund. Throughout the start of 2019, Jetlines reached a number of agreements with airports, ground handling providers, and booking services. Things seemed to be coming together, and a date for starting operations was finally set. December 17, 2019. But what about those A320s? Well, in April, Jetlines and Aircap decided to terminate those A320 leases, with Jetlines instead taking two other A320s from Smartlinks to be delivered in time for this December launch. In June of 2019, Jetlines also rebranded yet again, ditching the blue, red, and silver for a bold orange and black livery. According to a statement, the new brand was intended to be deliberately distinct from existing Canadian airlines, with the tagline of, Flying sucks less when you pay less. Throughout 2019, Jetlines continued to sign more agreements and seemed to be getting closer and closer to launching. Unfortunately though, all of this wasn't quite enough to secure additional funding, and after Jetlines was unable to meet a funding target, both Smartlinks and that South Korean fund pulled their investments. The company put its plans on hold once again, and laid off most of its employees, aside from a small team who would continue to try and secure funding. According to a statement from Jetlines, potential investors were concerned with how aggressively Air Canada and WestJet would react to them once they'd started operations. Even prior to this loss of investment, Jetline's representatives had reportedly made multiple appearances before Canada's Competition Bureau on the matter. After this point, the company had seemed to go relatively quiet. That's not to say that there wasn't work taking place, though. 
Just two months later, in December, Jetlines announced that they would be combining themselves with American charter airline startup Global Crossing Airlines. According to them, this move would preserve Jetlines' long-term strategy, providing an opportunity for them to continue with the Canadian operation when the time is right. Global Crossing would take over Jetlines in another reverse takeover, acquiring all of Jetlines' assets and what was left of the company. The deal closed in 2020, and being backed by two Miami private equity firms, Global Crossing presumably had much more financial support than Jetlines did. Also in 2020, those 737 MAX orders were officially cancelled, though some sources say these were off the table even earlier. In September of 2020, Global Crossing announced their plans to spin out or separate the Canada Jetlines division. This would create, or rather recreate, Jetlines as a standalone company, with Global Crossing investors holding some shares. That spin-out was completed in June of 2021, and that's essentially where Jetlines finds itself today, keeping their most recent logo, but seemingly dropping the flying sucks line and tweaking delivery slightly. However, this newest iteration of Jetlines has shifted focus towards becoming a leisure and charter airline focusing on sun destinations, as opposed to their previous ultra-low-cost carrier ambitions. With Flair established in the domestic market, and Lynx Air also planning to start with domestic flights, this was probably a good call for Jetlines. According to an update from their management in December, the events of 2020 have created what they call the best opportunity to start an airline in over 20 years. Part of this is that aircraft leasing costs are significantly lower than they were pre-2020, along with vendor contract costs. Being a startup and having a clean slate without any of the debt that existing carriers would have incurred over the past two years also gives them a distinct advantage. Having signed a lease agreement with Jackson Square Aviation in December, their first Airbus A320 went into paint that month and rolled out around Christmas. This first A320 will be delivered to Jetlines in Toronto around February or March of 2022, with two more joining in the summer. They plan to start in Toronto before expanding to the rest of the country and flying up to 15 airplanes by June of 2025. With all of that in mind, after 10 years of trying, it seems that this year may finally be the one for Canada Jetlines. The change in direction to focus on sun flying rather than an increasingly competitive domestic market may actually be in their best interest. Of course, in targeting the sun market, Jetlines won't have just Air Canada and WestJet to compete with, but also Sunwing and Air Transat. This will not mean less competition by any stretch, but there may be more opportunity for growth there rather than the domestic-only market. Given that there's now an actual airplane painted in their livery for the first time in the company's history, I'm inclined to say that this 2022 launch is very promising. In any case, it's safe to say that 2022 will be quite the year for the Canadian aviation industry. I wish Jetlines the very best of luck, and I look forward to trying them out someday. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.